Hello everybody, Peace of Christ. Um, today I'm going to go through Penn and Teller's video, uh, The Bible is BS, and refute it. Tonight we're going to take you through the damn Bible and show that it's full of inaccuracies, inconsistencies, and outright impossibilities. It is more fiction than fact, and that ain't bullshit. If you're religious and you believe the Bible is real because of faith, we can't touch you. It's an automatic tie. No one can bust you. The Bible must pride themselves on believing in things that are hard to believe in. They think God will bless them from... First off, uh, we as Christians, the born-again Christians, aren't religious. Um, the Bible says that Cain had religion and Abel had faith. The religious people kill people who have faith, genuine faith and trust in God. When we say faith, it's very different than how Penn and Teller wants you to believe what they mean by faith. When we say faith, it means that we trust in God. We don't believe that we're going to be blessed um, by God for believing things that are hard to believe in. No, that's not true. When we come to realize that the universe at its initial conditions for the Big Bang from most modern science uh, has been set, set up and rigged in a way for a life-permitting universe, uh, we realize that there's a God. Or uh, it could be as simple as a child just seeing the universe and its splendor and believing in God. And um, once we realize that, that every time if God were to act in mankind in human history on the earth it would be a supernatural event because God is not a part of his creation he is the creator and this is why it would be called a miracle but if faith isn't enough if you want history or fact in your Bible you are so screwed no that's not true if you ask any Middle East archaeologist the Bible is the number one place they go for looking for um, ancient cities, where they were, different war campaigns, trying to figure out what it is they're digging up and looking for. In fact, if you go to, if you Google archaeology and the Bible, uh, you will find uh, tons of websites dedicated to the archaeology that does prove the Bible. In fact, there's 5,000 um, articles outside of the New Testament that prove it. Um, so, you can just see. It's uh, all over. Bible archaeology. Uh, all over. The more we learn about archaeology and history of biblical times, the more we realize that most of the stuff in the Bible is fiction. It's an article of faith. It's part of a religious belief system that really doesn't fit the way we think when we think scientifically and we live in... Well, maybe you should uh, check all these websites out and you will see that archaeology does back up the Bible. Um, you know, just all over the place. There's so many. Uh, I don't think these guys know what they're talking about. These are books. Okay, we we'll want to get a website here. It's all over. Okay, um, let's keep going. The 
age of science where we're supposed to ask for evidence and challenge beliefs. We do ask for evidence. Our scriptures don't teach otherwise. It's religion that doesn't want you to question it. Jesus says, seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be open to you. St. Paul says, you know, if I can fathom all the mysteries of the universe, but I don't have love, I'm like a, you know, clanging a cymbal out of tune. Um, so, yeah, it is good to seek and find and get the answers. But for what reason? Are you guys just making it to uh, try and discredit the Bible? Well, you're just going to waste your time. We'll start right at the beginning. Genesis chapters 1 and 2. Once upon a time, God created heaven and earth in six days and then napped on the seventh. First off, it's not once upon a time. See how they want to turn it into like a fairy tale. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And this is the most fundamental thing. Is This is Big Bang language. The same stuff you want us to believe is right in there. Let there be light, an explosion of light. And God didn't nap on the seventh day. Jesus Christ said the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. God rested on the seventh day as an example for us to follow, to live in that pattern. And even still until today, we work in the seven-day cycle that goes right back to the beginning. We can start right off with the first two books of the Bible in Genesis. In the first chapter, God creates Adam and Eve at the same time. In the second chapter, God creates Adam, and then Adam does a few things. He names the animals, he does this and he does that, and he gets lonely. And he talks to God and says, you know, I'm lonely. God then says, all right, well, I'll provide you with a mate. And then he takes the rib and creates Eve out of his rib and so on. We all know these stories. These are two different creation stories. No, they're not. Genesis 1 is the six days creation. Genesis 2 is what happened on the sixth day and goes in detail about it. Now, believers will say, oh, well, that's just two different versions of the same event. Fine. But then don't, in the next breath, tell me, oh, we have to take the Bible literally. It's symbolic, and each symbol has its meaning. For example, the fruit that they ate, well, we later find out from Jesus Christ that the fruit is your actions. So it was the action of disobedience in the garden that caused the sin to happen. The snake is symbolic of somebody who is cunning and deceptive. And they were in heaven in the garden. And where they saw then before Satan disguised as something good, but really on the inside he was a serpent. And where he was was now a snake when they were kicked out of the garden. When it says this, it means this. Why can't it be literal and symbolic? Hmm? Why couldn't it be the first created humans? Why can't we say that? You haven't given any reasons why not. Now... Stay tuned, everybody, for the coming video, part two.